So welcome to developers meeting on Sunday the 12th of February 2023. Um, yeah, a lot of things happened um, in the last couple of weeks. Um, we will see today a lot of demoing of various kinds of um, in improvements or iterations and variations of what you do. I'm very much looking forward to that. And um, let's say one thing that I just want to inform you is that the, the idea to uh, kick the, the process for a standardization in uh, UAP data gathering and, and, and store keeping and keeping and so forth, this, this whole process of until a data set is really usable in the scientific community, um, that this standardization process is, let's say, kicked. And um, yeah, we are heading towards a direction where at the final goal, it shall be that all kind of projects like ours will work with the same or hopefully work with the same standardized data formats so that researchers will be able to easily retrieve data and analyze before working directly, for example, with the raw material. And that, for example, uh, for each uh, data set, also the not only the chain of custody, but also parameters about the hardware itself is included. So this is very important because otherwise we run into a situation where our data is a lot, but also a lot unuseless, uh, a lot useless. So our data is as good as it can be used. And I think this um, step into a standardization is the right one to do. And it is kicked now after the uh, UAP symposium. And yes, we are, let's say, one of the parts um, tweaking this or, or um, shaping this, the standardization form. And uh, we will certainly have an internal team um, that deals only with that. And I think Ido and Kristen are certainly part of that team to, to shape that, that format that does basically our own format because it just makes sense to, to build from that same, that same standard. Okay, having said that, um, anything from your side? Anything in personal? Anything you want to discuss? Otherwise, we jump over to whoever wants to start first. All right, so I guess, let's have a look. David, can you hear me, David? Yeah, I can hear you, yeah. Okay, Hi, guys. hey, welcome. So by the way, welcome everyone here, okay? I, uh, it's so many people now that um, <laughs> I cannot start um, calling everyone. That takes too much time. Um, David, would you mind to start your part first? Uh, yeah, don't mind. Yeah, no problem. Um, just give me one sec. Okay, so I um, hope everyone can hear me okay, but I want to show a way of um, what I've been working on, which is a way of evaluating background subtraction. Um, so some of you might have looked at this already. My apologies if you have, but um, I've Kind of got got going on it this week and uh, developed some code just to to kind of demo some things I've been working on. So um, I think this work ties in what with what Mike has been doing and also Mashman. Sorry, Mashman, I don't know your your, your real name, but um, just the work they've been doing on the simulation and evaluation. Um, so when you're running background subtraction. Um, the algorithm's, algorithm's going to try and determine what's motion in the foreground, what's static and should be belonging in the background. And at the output, you get um, a foreground mask. So that you can see, you've probably looked at this sort of stuff tons of times before, but we've got a video here and an object has been drawn on, onto the frame. And then this is the output of the background subtraction. Okay, so um, so hopefully this would just contain motion of the objects that you're interested in tracking, 
but often the background itself can be dynamic as well and changing. So um, as we're pointing cameras up at the sky, the dynamic backgrounds in our case will be likely coming from non-ideal conditions in, in weather like, like this. So this is an extreme case, but um, the light and the movement of the clouds is causing a lot of false positives in the background, in the foreground um, um, mask that we're producing from this background subtraction algorithm. So we can increase the, the threshold on the algorithm and it will filter out some of that noise and probably do a better job of, of allowing you to track uh, moving objects. Um, but I wanted to try and evaluate um, some way of kind of quantifying the performance of these algorithms so we can make, maybe make some decisions on, you know, um, where we could tweak things or do other things. Um, so um, <clears throat> the idea was to, um, if I just kind of pause this. The idea is when you're um, recording, when you're generating a, a foreground mask uh, from background subtraction, you can cross-check it against um, ground truth. Um, so what I've done here is for the same videos, this one here, this video. Um, this is the foreground mask on the right from the back output of the background subtraction algorithm. On the left is the ground truth. So it's just the circular object I'm drawing onto the screen by itself. There's nothing else. And that's the ideal um, output you'd want from a background subtraction algorithm that you're tracking. Um, so you have the foreground mass prediction and you've got the ground truth. You can kind of formulate this as like a binary classification problem. So in binary, binary classification, all data instances are, are classified as either positive or negative. And you get four types of outcome in this sort of situation. You get two types of correct or true classification, true positives and true negatives. And the other, other two types are incorrect classification or false positives and false negatives. So true positives is the number of, in our case, is the number of pixels classified, correctly class classified as foreground. True negatives is the number of background pixels classified as background. And false positives is the number of background pi pixels classi classified as foreground. And false negatives is the number of foreground pixels classified as background. So one way to kind of visualize this um, is if you have that data to hand, is to produce like a called confusion matrix. So you can see in that video, um, the vast majority of um, uh, predictions are classified as um, true negatives. Um, so this is quite common in our situation. We, you can see the confusing matrix we get from a this kind of binary classification problem is really imbalanced. There's many true negatives compared to any anything else, like false positives and true positives and all that sort of thing. But this is fairly common, I think, because um, in our use case, we've got a small moving objects in the foreground mass. It's typically small to the rest of the um, frame in the fisheye view. Um, so um, when we when we have this confusion matrix there and we have the true positives, false positives and all that sort of stuff, we can generate some simple metrics. Um, so accuracy, error rate, recall, precision, F1 score. There's a bunch of different metrics you can you can do for this sort of thing, but and not all of them are going to be useful for us. Um, so um, when the 
when data is imbalanced like this, um, accuracy and error rate are not so useful. They tend to kind of report the same scores, same values between zero and one, um, even if your data is balanced or imbalanced. But a couple that are potentially interesting for us, which is recall and precision. Um, so uh, with uh, precision, it measures the proportion of positive predictions that are actually correct. And recall measures the proportion of actual positive uh, instances that were correctly predicted. Um, so basically a high precision value indicates the algorithm is doing well at avoiding false positives. And a high recall value indicates the algorithm is doing well at detecting all of the foreground um, uh, pixels in the image. So once you do stuff like this, you can produce some interesting plots. And um, this one's probably quite interesting, but you can see here, um, I took a, I ran a, I ran that kind of process and recorded um, metrics for different thresholds on the background subtraction. So as we increase uh, the thresholds, um, the precision um, starts to, um, sorry, the precision starts to increase. And um, to increase the threshold, the recall starts to decrease. Um, now I was thinking something like this might be useful for informing um, how we work with um, like the cloud estimator, how we kind of map what the cloud estimator is doing to, to a threshold value, but I'm still working on that. Uh, um, David, may I, may yeah, I sure, yeah. ask you a question? To that, to mm -hmm. the, can, you, can you raise this picture again? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I read it correctly. So on the horizontal, you have the threshold. The threshold meaning the accuracy or what does threshold mean in, the, in this case? The threshold is, um, so with, with each one of these background subtraction algorithms, you can, you've got a threshold parameter. One so as you increase, okay, one, one, one parameter is the threshold, okay. Yeah, it's typically used on a, I think all of the background subtraction algorithm, you've got something equivalent to a threshold parameter. Okay, so, so that's, the, that's the distance in, let's say, RGB from the background. Yeah, that's the current one. Yeah, that's perfect, yes. Yeah. That, 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 the threshold is that. The threshold is, is the distance between the what we are, in that pixel, what we are seeing getting and, and the background that we are predicting yeah exactly. so if, if it exceeds the threshold then then it then it's, it's it's something get it okay kind of a contrast so the higher the contrast the higher the threshold the, the higher the accuracy yeah the so the precision the precision the precision yeah so uh, the trouble with doing that is as you'll see um maybe i'll just go back to this hold up um, spare with me, okay. can, can I just make one, one question also? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, some of the algorithms, the, the most simple one, simple one is just use a threshold. But like the, the ones like you are showing, the vibe ones, they, they have more other parameters also to use. And, and like the, 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 the learning rate and, and the number of, of backgrounds to, to, to track. And, and, and it changes a lot the, the, the overall uh, quality of the, the picture of the, the background subtraction. And it will be good for us if, if we could like make a, a multiple, I know it's it's a little bit harder, a multiple variable changing thing, but I'm just, I'm just stating it. Thanks, because I, I, had, I, I did play with Vibe for a while and I could get a lot, uh, much better precisions changing the other variables other than the threshold itself then also. Uh, okay. It's probably, it's, I noticed there's five or six different uh, parameters for five, isn't there? Is it matching number? I've not explored these yet, but maybe you could put, produce some similar kind of yeah. plots. Yeah, we, 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 can, we can work on that together because since I, I did play with that in the past, 
and I did implement a, a vibe prediction, vibe background speed tracker also on our own lead. That's much faster than the one on, on the BGS. Uh -huh. and, uh, and we can play with that for that as good. much yeah. as we want. Yeah, let me maybe get together at some point. So yeah, okay. the idea is to have an adaptive background subtractor, no matter whether whether it's a VVM or um, KNN or Vibe, right? Yeah, that was that was the idea. I mean, okay. it doesn't have to change very often, but if you've got a really challenging background, you could maybe change some of the the parameters. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look on, um, if I just start this running. So you can see the, the metrics being output here. Um, so, I mean, on a background like this, I mean, you could really lower the threshold and still not get many false positives coming through. Um, so it's kind of ideal conditions, really. But if you've got a background like this, and you've got a low threshold, it's going to be a real, real problem. Mm -hmm. So the idea is if you've used a cloud estimator or something like that to pick up on the fact that it's cloudy, you could um, start to increase the threshold. So you hear, you can see same conditions, but with a higher threshold and we're suppressing a lot of the kind of noisy clutter in the background. Um, yeah, but I, d I don't know how the easy these parameters to, are to change on the fly. I don't know, Fabio, do you? I can, I can comment on that. Um, um, th th we can make them really easy to change. I would th th don't let that be a, a restrict, you know, any sort of restriction or a worry. Um, th that that that's something we can we can build in so so that that that's not a problem at all oh cool yeah so some of, some of the parameters yeah we'll have to, to uh uh haste associate the 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 the, the background to be tractor and some others don't we we, we don't like, like the, the 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 threshold we don't we don't need it to but some of the others like the the amount of backgrounds to to to, to keep track and, and some of these things we have to just Reinitiate the background food tractor again, but yeah, we, we can we can change it as Max said. Oh, great, great! It's maybe something to try out. Yeah, um, I did produce some other plots, but um, I've kind of um, <laughs> lost where I am with them. I'm kind of in the middle of a house move at the moment, so uh, my head's a bit all over the place at the moment. But hopefully, that's uh, useful. I'll catch it with. Mike and Fabio, hopefully in the week. Yeah, that'd be cool if we could have a chat about that. Sure, perfect. Cool. Cool stuff. Great work, David. Thanks. We may silently applaud, right? <laughs> yeah, I like it a lot because it's a way for us at least to measure. And, and we can compare and at least know if we're getting a lot of false positives and the rest. So, so it to be a great tool. And I can also implement this kind of this kind of uh, uh, predictions and this kind of uh, evaluation. I can also do this this code in the background subtractor itself mm -hmm. uh, because since since uh, the background subtractor will go out. Uh, for the entire picture, it go out uh, to to all the pixels there. I can also include some metrics in in, in the path of the background of the tractor to give us some some parameters like uh, median and things like this. So we, we don't need to add an extra app on the way to 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 make the the, the, the pipeline longer. So I, I can give you some yeah, some, of, cool. and then we can we can use these metrics on, on a later pipeline to change the metrics on, on the the background of the tracker itself. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Yeah, great. Good stuff. I mean, adap adaptive background subtraction is, is the right idea to go for. 
is is your um, Fabio is your consideration also switching? I mean, of course we will be able to switch back consideration uh, due to uh, let's say Ross calls where we say we want to use this or that. Configure yourself as this and that background subtractor, but um, would it be uh, mindful as to to also make that an automatic process, independent from yeah. a Ross? Oh, that. So, so okay. So, so ahead, just so you, just so you know, Richard, we can already do that. That 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 we can already do that. So that's not a problem. Uh, automatically switching, you mean? between kind of yeah so so changing changing algorithms and all that sort of stuff that can automatically already be done yeah but this decision making upon uh, which kind of background architecture is already in, is is currently in use depends on what say what david calls the uh, the cloud estimation so let's say for example yeah. we have a certain situation where vibe uh, performs better than vme or vice versa so yeah so Okay, so I'll let me. So the 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 ability to switch a background subtractor using some sort of indicator is already in place. The the indicator and deciding which background subtractor to switch to is not. Yeah. If that if that makes sense. Yeah. That's yeah. What I want to say. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Who's next? Um, Lionel, go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, so I um, wait. Let's uh, change. Let's change. Let's continue. Okay. Um, so I um. I uh, finally uh, got my way around uh, ROS. So I've uh, uh, been able to uh, implement. Um, so um, so I, I uh, took a data set of the tracks mm -hmm. and I uh, created a, a neural network to predict the next uh, position from the tracks. And then I created a, a ROS node that uh, draws a, a, a dot where the um, PTF should point to to uh, to draw uh, to um, to point the, the camera to uh, the next uh, the next position of the object. So so that's the um, big bright uh, purple dot. So it's not um, it's not really uh, ahead of the plane because the data I use is not uh, is not classified at the moment. But uh, once I implement um, Yannick's uh, classification, I can uh, get some um, uh, I can train the the neural network uh, better. You see. Here it's uh, it's way outside, but uh, I, I gave uh, no consideration to the to the data. I uh, I just took whatever data I just wanted to implement a, a ROS node. So uh, so see it's uh, it's tracking the the object as well uh, using a, a neural network. Mm -hmm. Hey, cool, um, hey, cool. Uh, Lionel. What parameters are you entering for the uh, estimation? Uh, it's just the uh, just the vectors of a uh, distance. So it shall point from, let's say, the next frame position. Um, so the next frame position. Uh, let me think. Now, now I would just want so to ask you: What is the current? What are, what are you currently doing? What is the the distance that you um, want to train. So uh, I take the, the distance between uh, between two uh, two dots, and uh, predict the distance ahead of these two dots. So with the same distance of the previous ones, okay. Not the not the well. I haven't measured the the distance. I I put the sequence of distance as training data. Mm -hmm. So. Um, 
So if it's a if it's a plane, uh, basically it's a speed speed indicator. It's a, just a distance and time. So it's it's just speed. Yeah, but you 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 place <coughs> the, the the pink dot at the place where it shall be. Let's say in the next frame or in yes what, in, in the next frame. in the next frame. Okay, where it is in the next yeah. frame. Okay, got it. No, it's okay. it doesn't. Can you... Yeah, the, the result is not uh, is not convincing because uh, I was just uh, prototyping the the neural network. Mm -hmm. But the next step for me is to um, use some uh, classified uh, data to train the neural network. So uh, using uh, so so now the um, the type of movement that uh, Yannick uh, classified. I'm going to use that as a parameter. So I, I think that it should be able to, to be uh, slightly ahead of the object for different classes. And uh, Lionel, do you not uh, take the directional vector in, into account? So in, in, in which direction the, the object moves? Uh, so direction. that's what I do for the classification, yeah. actually, as input. I, th uh, I think you could improve, maybe, if you if you oh could yes. add that no. as another training data no. um, uh, yeah. vector, let's say. No, uh, for me, the, um, well, the, uh, what I worked on this week is the, the right-hand uh, side of the screen, is the, this code here. Uh, that was from previous week. And um, so this is this is just making queries to the model. Mm -hmm. And the model, I haven't paid uh, much attention to it yet. Okay. I'm planning to okay. uh, this week. But the, the model, see here it's, uh, it takes uh, all those uh, values as, uh, as features. Okay, it takes direction, it seems. Yeah, and uh, okay. next week, I hope to um, have a, another value here, which would be called uh, class. Mm -hmm. And that would be uh, the output of uh, your classifier. Yeah, okay, so, sounds good. So, uh, so I'm going to, uh, so that's why I was asking you about uh, your uh, repository uh, this Friday, because it's the next step for me to add a feature here to uh, hopefully uh, get something working based on the classification instead of uh, just taking the movement as a whole. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think it will definitely help with planes. And so I, th I think the neural net will better understand uh, how fuzzy the uh, movement probably is, right? So with birds, you have to, the neural net has to expect that the movement is more fuzzy than with planes. So yeah. I guess that that will help, yeah. Yeah, I hope so, I'm not sure. Uh, so it's a journey. <laughs> mm -hmm. Interesting, okay. right. Um, great stuff, uh, by the way, Lionel. Um, I think it's the right approach to do it with uh, your um, neural network approach. Um, it just has to be tweaked, of course. Yeah. Um, it's a uh, so the the right side. Um, very uh, happy with it. Mm -hmm. This uh, this is okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was my first. Uh, that's what I did last week, and I'm going back to this part this week. I get it. Okay. With uh, with input from uh, from uh, Yannick stuff mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The the good thing is it will um, because you you train it for the next frame. Okay, that gives yeah. you a vector, an, an estimate of the the probability with the highest probability of, of a flying vector for the next frame. Yeah. But this yeah. frame, and that's the only um, base of knowledge what we have at that particular time, is the now. And um, what we can do then is to have um, a prediction into more into the future, because we need that prediction. Yes. We, 
of course can just extrapolate and multiply less you use this as a unity vector and just multiply it because we need the time to to have the the, the ptf is slowing with a certain um, yeah so i, I took uh, i think we talked about uh, two seconds in the past the slowing time could and be this, up to two seconds this is a variable that is due to um all, uh, all kind of parameters for example the the current position of the ptf where it's pointing to at the moment when it has to turn uh, yeah. 180 degrees it's a different thing when you just take five degrees so yeah. uh, that that's a certain that's certainly um, sure, sure. something that has to be calculated but it, yeah. what i just want to say uh -huh. is it gives us the the potential to um i think christian can can go into detail if you, if you want to christian uh, yes, please. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, what was the question uh, exactly about? I, um... no, I, okay, <laughs> uh, I just revert. Okay, so the thing is what, what Lionel did is an estimation of the flight path. And he yes. did it, let's say he concentrates on, on the next step. What is the next frame showing? Where's the highest probability of the next point showing up? Okay, so what he did right now is the... The infrastructure for it, 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 it he, he demoed that the, the process as such is working so he can communicate via ROS2 and so forth. He's now the next step is to, to, to trim the, the, the neural network into bringing a correct position. <clears throat> what we discussed then is the, 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 the use of that information because from that point we get in every time now, on every frame, we get the, the information of the highest probability of the position of the next, um, uh, where the event is at the, the, in the next frame. And from that, we get a, a vector where we can extrapolate. We can even go with, uh, with a certain degree of, I don't know, uh, uncertainty to the left and the right. But certainly we have a vector. What we can then recalculate is uh, the, the, the meeting point where the, the PTF will at the end be at the nearest point on, on the flight path to, to, to pick it up. Um, this vec vectoring ahead, remember? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, I got that. Uh, what, what I was wondering about is <clears throat> because we, uh, we, we take the, I think the only the last frame to predict where it will be, uh, the, the actual frame and the last frame uh, to predict the next, where it might be in the next frame. I think we should take much more than only those two. I yeah. think, let's say, Keep up to seven, seven to 10 yeah. should be uh, um, uh, exactly. something. It's called uh, hysteresis as an algorithm. So you, you look at how the movements were in the last, uh, let's say, five to seven. Normally, you can can change it on the fly how much uh, uh, frames you're going to take. Um, but uh, for that, it's it's a much better way of determining um, how the flight path will look like, because then you can say, okay, if it's going in a, a 90 degrees angle of that perpendicular to uh, the path that is calculated, then there must be something wrong. Well, it's uh, it's it's not a natural phenomena. Can't we use a recurring uh, neural network? So that it, because it's it's a video, it learns on every step. Yeah. So it makes an estimation and it gets a penalty or a, a good point when it hits it. Yes. Okay. It can <clears throat> because it it has uh, uh, it calculates more than just one direction, but the possible ones. Let's say the twenty percent most possible ones. And because you have got the hysteresis in the background, uh, your prediction will be more precise. So you 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 have a a range in what direction it can go much more than just a particular one line way I, 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 i'm i'm still i'm still fighting with featherman what, what you just said um because a, a hysteresis is for me something where you have let's say a normal 
Bezier curve that you stretch to the left and the right, let's say that you have a different path going back as you go forward. Um, what does this elasticity, like magnetic elasticity, um, have to play in here? Um, you cover for the possibility that you have got uh, such a changing course like in 90 degree angle. No, no known object, no bird, no plane, no known plane can just stop there and go uh, um, perpendicular to it uh, within a millisecond. Okay. If you take a look at all the videos, okay. everything, helicopters, planes, birds, even, um, <clears throat> even uh, dragonflies can't do that. I, I, yeah. I, of course. So but I just wanted to know why is this have to do with the hysteresis? Where is the word hysteresis? I just want to because make sure if if you use hysteresis, you know where the uh, object was. Let's say in the last seven to ten uh, frames. And uh, by tracking that. Are you just, sorry, did you mean history? Of course. Uh, the, the last, you said let's say, seven to ten, hysteresis. hysteresis. Now hysteresis is something different. His history, you mean? Okay, the history of the last track points. Okay, you can take this into account and to elaborate. In 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 German, hysteresis. But the the hysteresis is is doch nicht die history. No, hysteresis is an an. Okay, sorry. I'm turning to, to uh, German for that. Uh, Hysterese ist ein Prozess, mit dem ich halt eben mir die letzten, sagen wir mal, sieben bis zehn Frames angucke. Und äh, aus diesen ergibt sich ja dann eine ähm, ausgezeichnete Wahrscheinlichkeit, äh, wohin das Objekt äh, im nächsten Frame steuern wird. Because it's a kind of correction yeah. that you're using for predicting the path. Is it that you give different weights to the more in history it gets? Uh, no, you calculate a weight from, let's say, the last seven frames. Okay, and this defines what you call the hysteresis. Yes. I get it, okay. Okay. Uh, in astronomy, we have uh, such a tool that um, corrects the tracking. Uh, it's called PhD2, and this uses it a lot. And um, with that, you can uh, even uh, opt out um, the disturbance that is coming from the uh, seeing, from the atmospheric disturbance. So that if you have a, a guiding star, this one is pinned to where um, it should be and uh, the tracking is corrected by that so you get not any motion blurring and this can be used for tracking comets because they are moving so you you pinpoint the the head of the comet and say okay i'm gonna i want to track that one and here we have the same uh, uh, feature. Uh, we, we want to know uh, where, let's say, a plane is going, and then we can pinpoint, um, we can detect this plane, and then we can pinpoint uh, on it and say, OK, we want to track it. And therefore, to, to have it in the middle of our small bounding box, <clears throat> we can say, OK, to increase the prediction, we could uh, we uh, know, OK, it could be a plane because it's moving like it. Um, we look at the last, let's say, seven frames. And according to that, we can pre-calculate a much higher percentage where it's going. Uh, Lionel, how many frames do you take into account right now? Um, In just one. Just one, OK. Could you implement this as more than just the last one? Yeah, that's uh, that's my plan. Okay, okay, we will see the outcome. I'd say. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, great. Um, yeah, Lila, thank you very much. Um, good stuff. Welcome. So, um.
Uh, maybe I can jump in quickly yes. because uh, that was just related a little bit to the work that I do right now. Um, so last last weekend, I I said that I had some uh, problems with my RAM in processing the simple tracker videos, and uh, today I actually recognized that uh, the the problem is actually uh, relatively easy to solve. So. What I did last time is that I, I didn't resize resize the videos, the video video resolution, um, when I process the video. So maybe I I just share my screen also. Um. So I just used the default settings. Do you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. And which what I didn't recognize is that uh, this option here, resize frame, was set to false, and I I just didn't see it. <laughs> when I switch it on, uh, the the size is actually reduced from eight megapixels to two to uh, two megapixels, and then also the the RAM that is needed is reduced from from 20 gigabyte maximum to about 8 gigabyte maximum. So I thought maybe that's that's also important to know uh, uh, in relation to when when the tracker is is used in in production, uh, so to speak. Um, and what I also noticed is that um, also the detected tracks. Um, depend on the video resolution. So I, I've made a just a very, very quick um, collage here. I don't know the, the, the right English word for that. Mm -hmm. So what you see here is, <clears throat> sorry for the resolution, I just did that very quickly this afternoon. Um, uh, for the same video basically processed with Simple Tracker, but with four different um, settings and the upper two videos were not uh, resized so they are the eight megapixels from I think that was uh, the the Hua cam mm -hmm. and here the lower two videos are resized to two megapixels and I found it just interesting. Also, what I also changed is the, is the so-called sensitivity parameter. So it's here from three to one. And then uh, the, these are the same settings, just resized. And then I also changed from the resized video, I changed the blur setting from three to, to one. I also did other changes, but just to not get too convoluted, I. I just put these four uh, tracks against each other and now I just go slowly across the video and you see that the tracks from the video that is not resized are, are pretty short actually. So I have the feeling that currently the, the simple tracker is maybe optimized for the smaller video size. Could that be? Yeah, so I done so okay. it's not optimized for the smaller frame size it's just it's a it's a okay. it's the question is to do with processing power really it's it takes yeah. a lot of horsepower to process a big frame and um yeah i, I noticed know, a lot, that a as lot well. more so than a than a yeah than a smaller frame and um yeah so you can imagine if you if you can only process two frame a second versus at a high resolution versus 10 frame a second at a row, lower resolution, you'll get you'll get a better view of the object flying across. So you'll you'll be able to get a better track. I know that doesn't really isn't true for video because you're processing the video one frame at a time. But right. um, yeah, there 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 definitely is a big impact um, when frame sizes go go up. I, I've I've not, okay. I've mentioned that several times in the past as well. So. Yeah. Okay, then then I missed that because that that was new to me. And I, what I try to do now is uh, try to find the optimal setting for my purpose, and and that is having long long tracks, 
so I can yeah. have that as, as training data and, and classify classify these tracks. So uh, what I, yeah, no, that's I fair, plan to that's do right enough. now is... Uh, may, yeah. may I interrupt you on that point? I think you... Yeah. The, 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 the problem here sits because you're working from the raw material. The thing is that in the future you won't. Yeah. Because you would, let's say, the output of the background subtractor, as David just let have seen us, is more or less something uh, high contrast in the whiting thing on the black background. So that's that's the only thing that moves in an opti in an optimal uh, background subtractor. So in that case, mm -hmm. size of uh, yeah, the, the, let's say the amount of data will be heavily reduced. But no, I don't think it is. It, it's not. No, 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 it's not, Richard, at all, because you have to bear in mind the frame size stays the same size. The frame size so the same. it has, yeah, so it has the same amount of, just because there's less variation in pixel colors doesn't mean it has to, it processes the frame size a lot faster, if, if, that, if that makes sense. It still has to process yeah, a very big frame size. So um, I, I don't, so I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not. I don't necessarily agree with the idea that it's gonna make it process faster just by having, you know, like a a, bi a binary frame frame well, state the, really, the where you've got white and black. The processing certainly not. I was uh, mentioning yeah, the data yeah. Uh, I don't quite. I don't. I don't understand that. Sorry. <laughs> No, I just meant that so the, the data I mean, rate the, will be reduced, not the resolution, and uh, of course not the processing uh, need. Absolutely not. I get that. But isn't it, yeah? But I don't think I, I don't think you can reduce the data rate if you don't reduce the resolution. You, you, you're not going to be able to, because essentially the resolution will dictate the amount of data that's transferred. Okay, um, if we transfer raw data, yes, but I thought it's. Uh, and in, in somehow encrypted in a, I don't know, PNG format. I thought yeah. that was still the case. It, um, it, then it's, yeah. It's it still big, though. <laughs> yes, of course, but still, if, if you take a PNG picture and they make it to, like like David showed us, totally black and there's just one, one dot in the middle, that is the result of the background subtractor, then this image is, as a PNG, very low in data rate. But yes, not not low in processing time. I get that. I was just asking for the data rate. Okay. <laughs> no, does not make sense. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not so. So I understand that compressed data is going to be smaller than raw data, yeah. um, but I still think the compressed data is quite significant so it's still a large so that 8 megapixel frame is still going to be 8 million pixels regardless if they only black and white pixels or if they are lots of color pixels you know you know you know to be fair we do currently all the stuff operates on a gray frame mm -hmm. so it it only it only has, it's not a, um, yeah, it's a, what, it's, it's a, is it 8 bit versus 24 bit? Because it doesn't have all, all, all the colors. So it's just, it just has the, 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 the grays going, you know, higher or lower. So, so I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is I'm not sure if I don't, I would. I need to be shown that it's gonna process it faster. W however, the image is changed. I don't just. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm making a bit of a. I'm not really explaining myself correctly. Um, uh, I, I get what you mean. I'm, the processing of each frame will take the same time, no matter what what the content of the image is. I was not yes. mentioning the content of the image and the processing time. I just talk, thought about the the processing. I oh, know. The total processing time, which includes also the, the acquisition of the data. Basically, the, the data rate. But I think it, sorry, we're losing us, us here in, in, in something philosophical. Yeah, I think. no, no, no. 
<laughs> no worries. Hey. No worries. <laughs> Yannick, can, can I can I say can I say something quick? Yes, please, please. Okay. So, so think about it that um, you know, uh, in the end of the day, the resolution, frame per second, everything are parameters on the camera driver. Okay. So given a proper neural network, that will be able to adjust in real time, you know, when something is happening, right? The, the, fir the first thing that you want to focus um, uh, on, on detection is actually that something moved, right? And that, uh, and, and that movement usually have a lot of weight in, in, in it. If I speak about like the, the, the programming object that, that, you know, engineers are working with, right? So we have to have some weight on how much the movement is important compared to everything else on the frame, right? After that, th th then comes, do we want to increase the resolution? Do we want to reduce the resolution? Um, uh, 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 so goes the, with the FPS, exposures. And, and this camera has so many features, it's, it's crazy, right? W what we need to ensure really that all, all of these are available for configuration and we learn uh, uh, with different videos, with different configuration, we have the neural network actually learn how to operate the camera. Uh -huh. that, that will be the best uh, uh, move. So, so what, what I'm trying to say also is all of this work is important because all of it will be used eventually uh, 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 to, to train the, the, the neural network and, and improve it. But the idea is that it will have also a feedback loop that can it can adjust the, the camera's parameters in real time if needed. If, if besides like changing algorithms and all of that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does, mate. But I, I, I the bit that doesn't make sense to me is how you want to run that on a Pi Five. I didn't say it's going to run on a Pi Five. But it's it's that sort of footprint, though, right? That that's the sort of footprint of. Um, processing unit that we are looking for like no, I, no, I i'd understand if if you'd have like a, a massive pc sort of thing but yeah i so so no, no, look I, I'll, I'll show you a a, a drone okay that that that, 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 that can uh, um, um you know track a, a bicycle or whatever at uh, 30 miles an hour okay or even more or even a jeep at 60 miles an hour right um, uh, that has less power than the Raspberry Pi 5. Um, uh, it's, all, it's all about the, the, the neural network that you built into it. Once you have that in place, that's what will work in real time. Okay? Uh, 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 and that, that uh, I, I can tell you, the, the, the Pi 5 most likely will be more than okay with, with such a neural network. Just add my two cents here. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, first, uh, talking about the camera itself, the, the camera is a mono camera, okay? It, it, it's stated as color, but it's a bio pattern in the front. So we will be getting the, 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 the amount of pixels there, it's the amount of mono pixels, and then we apply a, a pattern to, to try to, 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 to compose a color, pic, a color image. So the amount of data is, the, this is, 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 is like a mono image. And then later on, we, we can we can calculate the color image based on the bio pattern. So that's so we we are reducing the, the amount of data we are passing through because we are we are dealing the, the image as a mono image. Okay. The se the second part is that the Origin Pi Five also have a, a, a neural processing unit that we can use. We we're still not using it, but we can we'll be able to use it, and, and it's. It's it's pretty it's pretty decent, but we're still not using it. So we might be able to use it later on. I I, I did not jump into into this yet because I'm focused on, on, on the the image pipeline right now. But we might be able to use the the, the, the neural process unit on the, the Orange Pi Five, and that will help a lot on, on the on everything else that we are doing. So I just want to figure to to, to express that because. Sometimes we're thinking about a color image, but in fact, it's not a color image. It's a mono image that has a, a bio pattern. So that means that they have filters, color in front of the pixels, and then later on, we process it and, and you can generate the color image. Exactly, yeah, thanks. <clears throat> Just that, that yeah. at least we're not processing like three channels of uh, 
uh, 500, uh, uh, 5400 by something else. That's a big image, a 10 megapixel image, times times three. But it's not that. It's it, 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 it's a uh, 20 megapixel image pure. It's 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 a mono image. No, I mean thanks thanks for that, Fabio. I, I think so. I'm probably a little bit biased just purely because I know how I've struggled to try and get the tracking to work on an image resolution larger than like 1000 by 1000 pixels, you know? So, so that's the only reason that's the only thing that's kind of driving my, um, skepticism that, 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 that's all. No, no, that's perfect, Mike. And, and I, I think that it, it's very nice for, for you to mention because I, I still did not have time to, to, to jump in on, on, on the tracker code itself. But uh, I can also get it out of, of OpenCV and, and it, it, we can optimize it for, for our case. So we can remove most of the generic stuff there, the, the conversion things that they, they, do it there, they do it there because we don't need it, because we know what we are working with. So it, it, it to be a, a, at least optimized for our use case. So it's a little bit faster, but we can work on that. Yeah, it's, I mean, we just very, we just then in a position where we, extremely dependent on your skill set um, f- versus a generic skill set like Python. You, you, know, you, 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 you know what I mean? So, so I, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah no, no, I got it, got it, got it. No, that, that, that's, why I'm, I'm, I, that's why I'm trying to, 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 to get more people to jump in and, and help them all with, with our calls here. I'm, I'm talking to Different channels and try to, to get more people to 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 jump in and help because it, it, we need that we need people with more with more like idols and myself and, and people that know how to to, to do a more low level programming because and to optimize things because or else it will be yeah will be, yeah, yeah 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 you're right agreed 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 uh, I I very much agree with you there and I mean I I, I it, I, I'm. It would be awesome if we can process that size image at that speed. You know, you know, you know what I mean. I mean, I, I don't want to sound like um, the. I'm. You know, I don't. I, I don't want to say I don't think we can. All I'm saying is just in my experience, I've struggled, and and it's because I'm using Python and you know all that sort of stuff. So, I think if a lot of that stuff can be moved to something more low level then there'll definitely be benefits to it absolutely yeah just my last two cents here it's is that right now as as i put on the channel uh on the i think it was on the 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 alex Khan camera channel the 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 res, uh, the frame rate that we get from the camera at the higher resolution at 16 bits it's it's pretty it's pretty low it's 7.5. That's what it can max out for 16 bits uh, max max resolution. And and so I'm more concerned. Uh, I think the, the the like background subtraction and blood detection and also the tracker can work with this kind of uh, frame rate. If we go to a higher frame rate, then yeah, maybe. But. Oh, if we're talking about the same resolution, but we might have to lower the resolution to, to work with higher frame rates. So it's a trade-off. We have to figure it out. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, agreed, agreed. And I think that's what the stuff that David's doing is going to be. So you know, it's going to help m- massively to like almost quantify that sort of stuff as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, there, there was one more thing that I wanted to show quickly, and uh, maybe I can do that now. So, uh, um, so the last thing that I wanted to show is that I currently have, I, I also need more data relating to, to, to bird tracks, for example, and I currently have problems getting, getting these tracks, so I wanted to show uh, one more video. I think it's, I think it's this one. Yeah, it's it's one of uh, Brad's 
um, videos and you can see some birds flying around here. But I currently, uh, until now, I can't uh, track them. And the interesting uh, part is that actually in the in the masked background frames, it actually is detected perfectly. So you can see the white stuff flying around. It's all the birds. Um, of course, it's also under almost perfect conditions. So uh, I don't think it invalidates anything that um, David said in the beginning. Um, but I was just wondering if this is maybe related to the fact that these birds, uh, the the speed uh, at which they cross the image is maybe too fast for simple tracker. And I, I was wondering if it m would make sense to eventually reduce the validation time. So uh, according to my understanding, there is some kind of uh, time used where in which it is checked if a moving object is indeed a moving object. Is that correct, Mike? Yeah, it it it, it, it there is, but it will. So when you see the the little bounding box go from yellow to green to red, yeah. those yeah. those are the various states. Uh, and I'm not sure if it's actually even picking up the bird flying across the the video frame. Um, you know, let alone no, it, trying to... it currently it currently isn't so um i was wondering if yeah. so so you mean it it's doesn't a... even go in the yellow state yeah the yeah validation that's... time so, starts yeah, yeah it's that, a, it, so the, yeah. This, it's really difficult this stuff because it's um so i think this could potentially be driven maybe by sensitivity as well maybe if you turn the sensitivity mm -hmm down all the way to one and the frame rate up it would it would detect it but then it would also detect a whole bunch of other stuff that would be like false detections and it would try and track mm -hmm. the false detections and that would slow the frame rate processing down it's it's all it's quite a it's quite a complicated pipeline mm -hmm. in a way um and one mm -hmm. thing yeah so I, I, in this case, I don't know exactly the reason why I start picking it up. Um, and I, I've struggled massively in the past with trying to find parameters that are suitable, um, you know, to for for everything. Because, mm. yeah, like in this instance, it's it's great that it might track that bird. But then if you have leaves falling or if you have a cloud go across, you're just going to it's just going to slow down to a crawl. You, you know, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. so the, the whole idea of dynamically being able to adjust those parameters, I think that is so crucial to everything in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, because it, then yeah, I was when it's only run, wondering about that because it, it's the birds are picked up so perfectly with the uh, background subtraction. So, so yeah, so you, you, you have to bear in mind wonder. that I, yeah, so that so from that it'll have to do a back so it'll have to do a blob detection. Then mm -hmm. so it'll it if it detects a blob, it then has to pass it into a tracker. So it passes it into the CSRT tracker and then gets an identifier mm -hmm. back. And now when it processes the next frame and the bird looks very different, it might not see it as the same object. It might see it as a different mm -hmm. object because it looks very different. So it's not gonna okay. track it, it's then just gonna pick it up as a, a new object and I see um, that makes sense because a blob detection is this optical flow thing, right? Isn't isn't it? No, so the optical oh, flow okay. is different to the blob detection. Yeah, so blob detection. Okay. So the optical flow stuff is that was something that um, Paul was kind of quite keen to go down, um, and and but currently because I think we don't it doesn't show anything in the optical flow. So I I, I thought it's maybe. Yeah, so the optical flow, that, that the, the the frames get resized to 400 by 400. So I don't even think it oh. it might even it might not even actually, you know, it'll be too small for for that frame frame size. So, okay. Okay. Um, so no, we don't actually use the optical flow for anything currently. Um, um, but 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 yeah, the yeah, 
So then um, this is a good example. I, I Probably it's too small to really see, but this might be a good example, which is really hard to track, right? Because this is a bird in three different states. So the wings close to the to the body, let's say, and then the next one is where the wings are spread apart and then close to the body again. Yeah, so and we... we... That, that we have a, a sorry. One, right? Yeah, so so I I know the background subtractor we use, which is the um, the moving variance one. Uh, we there's this this is a this is an artifact to do with that background subtractor. So you get you get so ideally what you want is you just want to see one object there. You don't want to see three, um, and and mm. so yeah. The, in a the, single frame yes yes yeah, like I see, like I see. like like that for example you don't you don't want to mm. see the three the three states of the bird there you just want to see the single one um mm. so and we do know we do know about that in in all fairness so so and we again the moving variance background subtractor works mm. really well in certain situations but it might not work well in others and um okay yeah, it's coming up. So with that a, means, in, in 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 other words, as long as the uh, UAPs are not morphing, they're fine. No, no, no. It, it, it's more about speed. The uh, yeah. the the width moving variance. Uh, it, it, if something moving very fast on the screen, that then it generates like ghosts, artifacts, and mm. that's the characteristic okay. of the of this background retractor. If we use Vibe, for instance, then we get only one image, but it has an, a, a other characteristics. It's a, it's a little bit slower, and we have to, 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 to figure out the right parameters or else to generate a lot of false positives, false negatives, and things like this. So it's a trade-off. This one is very, very fast to, to run, this background retractor, but for very, very fast-moving objects, it generates these kind of artifacts. So it, it, okay. you get like a ghosting of, of, of the object moving. It also relates to the, to the FPS, right? To the frame rate, right? It relates, yeah. It relates to the frame rate. Yes. If, if, if we had higher frame rate here, then then then, then, then to, these artifacts would be very much closer, because mm -hmm. it, it it uses like three images to, it, it processes three images to generate to, to to extract the background, but when it's moving too fast, then all these three images will have the, uh, it, it, they, they will, say that it, the the there is something there. Yeah, but, so but yeah, that, you, you can still you, you can still fuse all of these three together to one in, in a proper neural network. So that's fine, right? You you could even add um, like kinematics pro um, predictions like Lionel did into the blob detector. So so to get an idea where the next hit will be. The next event will be. So to know is that, there, you don't that do, by you, the you, way, you, you, yeah, you, um, you do not want. You you will you use prediction in the fusion, no, not in the detection. If, for instance, you can you can you can play it for yourself. If you change this background with tractor in, in the simple tractor to up to the vibe one, you see that that this one goes away. This this thing goes away, but it's it's a little bit slower. So. But then this would increase the chance that I get a track, actually? Probably, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. And Probably by the way, yes. is that related to the color channels here? Like that it takes three different images, one for each color channel for... No, no, no. It, it, it accumulates the image, for instance. It, it starts getting the image and then it, it, for the next one, it compares with the previous one. And when we get three images, it's compared for the last three ones, the last two yeah. ones, and, and and so that's why it generates three ghosts there, because okay. it compares with the last one. But since it's moving very fast on the screen, it, the, the frame rate is it's very it's not low, but it's moving very fast on the screen itself. Then then it, it figures out it figures out that it, it might be uh, three different objects, so it, it puts three things there. In the, when it in fact it's just the last one, and that's that's a problem with this algorithm itself. Yeah, but but you have okay. the, exactly the same issue, okay, in in a radar, right? 
That's why the, the, uh, you have a second phase after that that does the fusion, right? To to uh, to reduce exactly this issue. Yeah, the, the, I mean, I, I mean, know nothing about that, it. Yours? <laughs> no, that's nice for you to know. I didn't know about it. So yeah, so, so the, the, this is fine. Um, uh, and and again, as Richard said, you, you also have the prediction that we per participate in the fusion, and that allows you to see that those three vectors that you have on three d d different objects are actually similar. Uh, um, and uh, that's, that, that's exactly what the fusion does. It will merge them into a one target, right? That has three plots. And, uh, uh, and, 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 and what it means, the weight on the target will be higher. The, the, the weights on the tracks will be lower, right? Uh, uh, specifically, if they're moving fast, the, the weight has to be low, right? Uh, 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 and, 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 and that's how you get like the, uh, eventually the, 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 the PTF to kind of look at that. It will look at what has the more weight, right? Um, and, and, and a much more reduced, I would say, like vector. So that, that's fine. Actually, that's pretty good. Amazing. Okay, uh, cool. So I just note for myself that I'm going to try Vibe and that was basically, I think, everything from from my side. Now, I I didn't do any any coding last week or something like that. Okay. I can only start that with uh, more training data. So that's what I'm gonna, um, going just, to do. Just a question, Yannick. Um, <laughs> no, skip that question. <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> skip the question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Mike, why not go on with you? Anything you want to demo us? The, I, n not particular. I mean, I, I don't really. The only thing I can demo is is um, I don't know if you guys are terribly interested in seeing it, but it's. Um, uh, I, I'll I'll show it and then. Um, uh, Um, so I just, this is all, um, okay, let me show and then, so the thing I wanted to show demo year really is, um, you can see there's some, so that's the drone video, the drone going there as you can see, but there's also this little bit of this dot that's flo that's flying over the screen, flying across the screen, which is my little simulation um, track that is that is going across the screen. And the idea behind this is that we can have um, we can put together a library of different um, not the atmospheric conditions, but of different um, um, just weather conditions. So that we and then we can we can use that to determine the um, use that in combination with like determining if you know if there's clouds or not to try and put together a list of parameters to use for the background subtractor or whatnot um, and 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 try and use that to yeah sorry. So we can we can replay videos that have got challenging backgrounds and backgrounds that change. For example, clouds coming in, birds flying by, leaves coming down, um, and we can we can then use that to try and um, determine the the best parameters for the background subtractor and the the blob detector. Um, and we can do that in a because we can we can determine the 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 ground truth because we have because I can also um, I, I can also demonstrate this on a, a white background so we'll have a a track that's being tracked as a ground truth and then we can. Um, compare that to 
what happens when there's lots of clouds going by or anyway yeah so sorry i'm making it <laughs> not doing well with trying to explain that i'm sorry no, um it, but that, that's you, pretty what, what you just said is that you but we, you can choose a variety of videos with different weather situations and put your simulations on, po on top of it yes and then track yes first is it just being a static frame yes, yes. this is yes. just being like a white background right um yes so that yeah that's all and I, i've done the first cut of the qos stuff but i can't really show you any i mean that's not really demoable so this was the only thing i could really demo <laughs> okay um in all fairness <laughs> so yeah that's that's me <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Why sorry? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. No, I'm, I'm, I'm terrorized. I've just made a hash of trying to explain that in all fairness. So, um, yeah. No, I think basically the, the whole idea, I mean, we have discussed it so often. I mean, the whole idea of simulating things is the only way to go because, uh, yeah, we cannot capture everything. So we have to no. simulate some, some so called unknowns. Yeah, exactly. And the. the the goal there was we could have a variety of challenging videos and we could then play with the size of the object, the size of the frame, you know, and all this sort of stuff to try and, right. yeah, and all those sorts of things. And we can do it in a very controlled manner because we can dictate the trajectory of the object, um, you know, so we can then get metrics on a, on a, of the trajectory on a white background and then replay it on a cloudy background or a sunny background and see how it behaves and you know those sorts of things it's it's all to do with it's all just to to try and improve the performance of the detector right because mm -hmm. the less false positives and the, the less kind of wrong things we detect the better and the faster it'll process so it's just in aid of that absolutely Yo, um, anyone else? Um, hey, by the way, Mati, long time no see. You there? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, Rebecca, uh, did you mention anything you want to show us at that point in time? Or did I get that wrong? Rebecca? Um, did, did she say anything? No, Rebecca, we cannot hear you. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah. If there is not anything else left for, for discussion, I'd say uh, we close the session. Um, uh, uh, Richard, do yes. you hear Christian? He he said he has a question. Christian, did you hear can that? You say anything? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I have to step out again. Damn. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, yeah. I'm back on. Maybe okay. seem uh, the same with Rebecca. Okay, uh, I've got a question to uh, to Yannick. Um, um, it's yeah. about uh, weather conditions uh, and uh, doing uh, some research about, let's say, clouds uh, with Geist 360. Um, mm -hmm. Is this an option or do you think the, the resolution and the outcome of it would be not that interesting? And uh, if you say, okay, we don't need any uh, weather condition information uh, from Sky360, um, would it be nice to filter away all those uh, clouds by uh, dividing through a flat field image uh, before, we get the, uh, b before we get the image out into the data stream? Um, because sorry, I a flat field it, image normally is, uh, 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 relate to what David uh, presented today. Um, in some point, yes, to David, to uh, uh, Lionel, to uh, and to Mike. Um, if we can take out such informations uh, by dividing the raw image uh, through a flat field image, which just which just only contains, let's say. Um, 
disturbance uh, in the sky, uh, dirt on the uh, on the dome, maybe some reflections and properties of uh, the fish eye uh, and uh, dust, maybe dust if there is dust uh, uh, on the chip. Uh, those mm -hmm. things can be taken out uh, normally by taking an image uh, that contains all that and no other th other source and then dividing through it. And uh, what mm -hmm. I'm trying to do at the, um, at the moment is um, to build a pipeline that can be run on the camera before the image uh, is uh, put out uh, to uh, the Pi. And then and it's already reduced uh, uh, or cleaned yes. from the noise, let's say. Yes, I, I call that image reduction pipeline. Mm -hmm. And um, if we do not need the clouds, because we can't do anything with that, kind of data, then we could remove them and make the process of the um, background subtraction uh, much easier hmm. because it's okay. pre-cleaned. I don't, understand yeah, I don't know in which context we would need yeah. the, um, the clouds uh, uh, other than uh, stationers might be um, a mm. little it, bit confused when they look at, at, at the video stream. No, it's, but, it's just the processing um, of what Christian is talking about, not what, what you finally it's, it's, see. It's just the, no, no, no. the okay. processing pipeline has different uh, paths where it uses different resolutions, color depth, and what have you. Uh, yeah, and uh, the question is uh, to you as uh, a professional uh, um, that uh, uses, maybe uses uh, cloud information. Uh, how do we have any, uh, let's say, outcome by um, looking at the clouds or are the, uh, the clouds only noise? Can you do you something mean, scientific? Does, if, if they contain, contain any information related that could be useful uh, regarding UAPs? No, no, uh, uh, from, or from for the other uh, scientific uh, purposes. Me me metrologist sign, uh, side of you. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. Um, so currently we don't use, uh, at least in our group, we don't use cameras right now to infer information about the um, cloud cover and so on. We, we just um, use then if we need cloud cover data, um, we typically just use station data from the German Weather Service. And um, I think they, they switch to some automatic procedure to, to, um, um, to determine cloud cover. But this is not related to my, my current work. I find it interesting what, Dave, what uh, David is doing. I think... Uh, it's uh, it's quite interesting, and I was I was already wondering if I could incorporate that in some way, uh, or use that, not incorporate, but use that in some way uh, for my uh, my own work. But uh, not made any conclusion on that yet. Okay. But uh, so basically, we can if skip I would all do it, the clouds. I would, I would cite it also. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so basically, we can skip all the clouds and uh, remove them. Uh, so uh, we can't do anything uh, scientific with that. It doesn't help in any way. Other than uh, determining the cloud cover, for example, and cloud type uh, at a specific location. That can be interesting in, in, a, in a number of different ways, but um, okay. Uh, but, then uh, we, I don't we... see the direct connection to UIPs, and 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 I always see it in this context. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Um, we um, when we first started, we said, okay, uh, Sky Three Hundred and Sixty is not only uh, a platform for uh, for uh, um, researching 
UAPs, but uh, you can mm, do uh, things with birds, or if you're a plane spotter, uh, it could be nice uh, to have such a thing, or other things yeah. like insects. Um, these are special ways of um, of be interested in what's going on in the sky. Yeah, okay, mm. uh, of course. We are all interested in UAPs or let's say UFOs, but uh, there are some people out there that might join us or might get a station because they are more interested in birds or more interested in planes. And mm. maybe there are someone uh, who is more interested in clouds. And uh, mm. this this is just a question. This, uh, is this there is any scientific? I mean, there is a connection to. Yeah, there's a, there's a direct connection to the, the, the long wave radiation emitted by the atmosphere, for example, right? It is something that we work very often with. So it's, it's related to the radiation balance at the, at the surface, which is important to my work. Um, so um, there is some, some data uh, there that could be interesting, of course. For, okay. for scientists, for so for then we are going and... to do it that way that uh, we get a reduction uh, module for uh, re for uh, for removing it for the uh, UAP part, but we keep the data that we remove um, as um, as a separated stream. Um, let's say as a, as a single topic. Okay. Yeah, that would be would be interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just one. Yeah, Sorry, Chris, thanks, Christian. Christian, I don't know if you can hear me, but yeah. Um, can you determine, or Yannick as well? Can you determine cloud height from uh, from data from the uh, video? Mm, no, no. Uh, for cloud height, you need uh, um, uh, from just looking at an image. Uh, from let's say you've got. Uh, a cloud and you're looking in it from underneath to the top, you can't determine height because uh, th there is uh, no, no exactly. way to measure it. So I mean, I mean maybe with tree angulation, right? If you can um, but it's extract diffuse. features. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just think it, it to can do extract. That. Mm. Yeah, that mm -hmm. could be. My, my thinking was just if you had some object and you wanted to try and determine the height of it, um, or y you could make an estimate based on the cloud height. Um, so if it's mm. kind of low, low cloud, um, and the object's passing behind the cloud, you could... If you have some kind of information like uh, radar, uh, like a cloud radar system, uh, yeah. w which is not accurate to, let's say, uh, two meters or so. It, it's more accurate to 100 meters. Uh, mm -hmm. But this, this, the resolution is not good enough to determine height of an object with it. The height of an object you can get uh, with uh, looking at the dimension of it and uh, the uh, angular uh, uh, um, separation of it. Uh, with that, you can calculate it. Uh, there's an uh, easy formula, and we uh, published that formula um, in uh, the file. Uh, I think it's a table we, we used uh, where we calculate what uh, resolution uh, for the lens and what resolution for the camera you use. This is uh, the, the first part that we calculated how uh, what angular size has an object uh, from uh, a distance. So if you know the angular size because you could measure it, then you can calculate uh, the direct distance of it. Therefore, the clouds are uh, not a very good measurement because they are too diffuse. Uh, okay. mm. Thanks, Chris. I, and it's you can use lasers for that. I think uh, the instrument is called Silometer, and it uses a laser. But I, I know we are not allowed to mention that word, so... Uh, Thank you. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Who said that? What was the word? No, I, I don't know. I don't know. 
Hey, Yannick, by the way, you, you mentioned once that you can retrieve data about layer, uh, cloud layers from central servers around the planet. Was that true? Was that part of the data package that you can retrieve? Um, um, currently, the a IP API that I looked at, it doesn't contain uh, cloud hide, as okay. far as I know. It is more... Uh, it's a, well, that would be a mid, little bit more involved, let's say, to to get that. But there, there is this, um, okay, every airport on this planet has a weather station, and there are platforms mm -hmm. the, on the planet where you can retrieve the, the current weather from each, pl uh, e each airport. So we could, and there is a cloud layer uh, in these reports. So what we yeah, can that, do that, is that's, interpolate that could be, yeah. somehow, <laughs> three-dimensionally interpolate. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, to use that information at which height an object might be, is that, no, I think would that be I the think purpose? Or? No, I think it's interesting when you, when you analyze the data that you have that as an additional... Uh, data point. I think it's good to know yeah. what the cloud cover at that particular time when the event, when the material was recorded is. Because you can always hear this when, when, when uh, um, pilots uh, make their reports, they always talk about cloud hair layers. That, that's why uh, I yeah, uh, was thinking yeah. about uh, keeping, uh, separating it, but keeping it. So if there mm -hmm. wouldn't be any use for us or for other groups uh, to do something with uh, the cloud data, we could just delete it. But in this case, it's better to just separate it to f for the normal work of, let's say, UAP tracking. We, we remove it, but uh, we store it away um, that we can say, OK, it's additional data and we can do thing, something else with it. And we know the conditions at the point of observation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I think David also needs uh, that data for his um, estimation. estimation, which yeah. he wants to use for the background subtraction, right? So. Yeah, but this algorithm, is, this algorithm yeah. can be placed on another point in time. It could even be placed, let's say, in the firmware. If it's an algorithm that has yeah, yeah, that's that's mm. my point. Okay, it can be put there. So yeah. he makes a decision. Okay. I think what Kristen is talking with us <clears throat> is that from the raw stream, we have several streams, and of course we need a background yeah. reduced stream for the tracker because the tracker works more accurate on a reduced noise, and even the blobbing and so forth. But then there is yeah. the raw data that is uh, the raw data that is also saved for. For later use because we also want to see the raw the raw data the raw video when the event is recorded so mostly we do not record everything we only record when there's an event detected but in this case when an event detected then let's say in hindsight 30 seconds in hindsight shall also be in in the record in the video or in the data set or whatever mm. so, yeah, can i jump in quickly so um, so I get really um, confused quite quickly with certain things. And I'm, there's a lot of, um, so I'm, I, I think we need to try and nail down what's required for the alpha um, as well. Because there's a lot of, and I'm not sure if this stuff is like aimed for the alpha or not or what. So that's the first thing. The second thing is um, you just got to bear in mind that, currently like if we record data and this is just um this is i think it's this i i, I use an example of a the three and a half thousand by three and a half thousand pixel thing that that, that records at about um at 30 frames a second i think that that records at something like was it seven and a half or 17 and a half gig a minute so we need some sort of policy also 
that decides what happens when we run out of space and those sorts of things. Um, yeah. you, you know, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of, there's a lot of, I understand the desire to record everything, but I, I think we really need to then have some sort of ideas to what we do when we run out of space. Do we, you know, you know what mm. I mean? Do we let the user know or do we start deleting stuff or, you know, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, the the the, the alpha. I, I I would like to try and nail down stuff that's required for the alpha, um, and, and what's included in that. Um, cause Mike, yeah, yeah. Just so that I also have parameters to work within, because <laughs> I don't do very well when it's just an open-ended sort of thing. I, I really struggle, like personally. Um, so it'd be nice to have some sort of. Um, some sort of idea as to what, what you want the alpha to be, if that makes sense. I know you mm -hmm. want to jump in. Yeah, I'll jump. <laughs> sorry, I'm in pain here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, so, it's not yeah. important for now, May. If it, it, we can we can have a chat about it some other time. Honestly, I, it's just okay. I just wanted to raise it. That that that's no, all. No, it's I, not something I, that we. I, 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 I agree with you, with you, and that's why I, I wanted like to focus um, like, like two separate things, like one the alpha, what is needed, and then everything else that we are working on because I, it's getting confusing for me as well. Um, so let, let let let's speak this week about it and and see how we can fix it like uh, starting next week. Okay, uh, but but I, I I think like separating conversation to like let's focus on alpha first and then everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, Rebecca, are, can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. I sort of hear you. Can yeah. you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Thank God. Okay. Okay. Because you. you're kind of cutting, you're kind of cutting in and out like it's windy weather, but you can hear me just fine then. Yes. Yes. Okay, then I'm just, I'm just going to read what I was doing here. Um, as you know, I, I showed you a sample of a potential uh, graphical user interface in the GUI channel, and it looks like everyone likes that. So uh, I guess we'll go with that. It's the OpenMCT graphical user interface. Mm -hmm. It's a next generation mission operation. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> I, I think someone is messing with her. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry that the whole topic is absurd. You might have to delete this part. Um, I'm sorry, it's just the whole UMP thing and it just started getting me laughing. Okay. But it's an up. Uh, so I went through this. <laughs> yeah, I can't do this. I'm laughing. Okay. I'm sorry, you guys. Okay. I just, this is too funny right now. So, yeah, cut me out of this right now. No, no worries. Go ahead. Uh, Rebecca, um, <laughs> I, you, you said this week that you want to show us something. Uh, did I get that wrong? Or uh, you was postponing it to another time? Uh, sorry, I got the giggles because of the whole uh, concept of this, the UAP. Sometimes it cracks me up that we're all doing this, although I take it very seriously as well. Uh, yes, I just wanted to say, <laughs> I just wanted to say that, yes, we, we found a GUI that we like, the OpenMCT from NASA. Um, what I'd like to do, first of all, is to make sure that I can actually get the data from ROS2 into, uh, <clears throat> into a website. Um, we use one of the let me see. Because we can get data from ROS2 via ROS Bridge, and because OpenMCT is a, is actually a JavaScript HTML application used in the web browser, that we can. I'm so sorry, I cannot do this today. I'm really laughing. I am so sorry. I was ready this whole day, and now, right now, I will do this next That's week. Right. I'm so That's sorry. No, no worries. No worries. <laughs> no, sorry. no worries at all. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it's quite refreshing. Okay, so uh, we, I like it. 
I like it. <laughs> okay, we postponed for a week. Perfect. Um, so, yeah, a quarter of an hour left. Um, Fabio, we didn't hear you. Uh, you want to show us something? Just one, one small thing on the Open MCT. So, so I, I really liked it um, when Rebecca sent it. Um, um, and this is exactly what I would expect from, from uh, our um, kind of interface. Okay. Um, uh, the, the fact that it comes from NASA and, and uh, it's designed for mission control, um, you see that it already has all the uh, record replay capabilities that I was speaking about, um, uh, right? And it has it also built in the, in, the, in the client side, so you can do like advanced scenario on the client side when you do investigation. Uh, that, uh, that to me, it's like really, really cool. Uh, uh, um, so so a great finding, Rebecca. This is excellent. Thumbs up. Oh, uh, uh, sorry. W one, one more thing uh, 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 yes, uh, about that. Uh, I, I was starting with that, and I was like, "What am I missing?" So, so uh, uh, last night, uh, uh, Ross announced uh, Ross Space um, um, uh, with NASA. Okay, uh, 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 and this is a, again another advancement on on uh, what's what Ross is becoming. Okay, uh, like the de facto, uh, um, uh, you know, robotic system of systems for anything uh, from space to whatever uh, um, uh, you know and now it's space and industrial right uh, 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 so we, we are with the right choice what, what we are making so this is good uh, i do suspect that open mct either will adapt ross mm -hmm. uh, now because of it mm -hmm. that's something that uh, I, I i want to actually approach the ross space person mm -hmm. the cto and, and ask him about that mm -hmm. uh, but but Again, they just started, so I will give it probably a quarter before we do anything. Uh, but I'm pretty sure, again, that the, the, those two efforts will merge. Um, and because they're going to focus on a, a, a user interface for robotics, mission control makes a lot of sense. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Um, um, yeah, so that, that's my take on that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I, I forgot to mix it with ROS2. <laughs> No worries, perfect. Yeah. So okay. We'll on on my Go ahead. on my end, yeah. On my end, I didn't do much on development this week. I'm trying to I'm trying to make the code more uh, production ready. So I'm trying to make some to, to make it sure that it's running properly. I'm trying to make sure that that's it's not failing for any kind of reason. Or, or treating the exceptions and the er errors uh, correctly, mm -hmm. because in, uh, it, for me, it's in the beginning it was just more a proof of concept, and then right now I'm, I'm moving the proof of concept to something more reliable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't have anything to show it yet. I'm trying to just the thing. The first thing I'm trying to to to, to do is to make sure I can get the data, the, the raw data from the camera mm -hmm. using USB. In the proper way, faster way. In the proper way, I'm I'm trying two different KHY cameras and things like this. So to make sure that even with switch cameras for any kind of reason, or if the the, the station here doesn't have the the, the one it it has another KHY camera, it will run also. And uh, and then I will try to make something that that, that I can show you guys tracking things in real time using the camera. Mm -hmm. Okay, you using the real camera. That's what you say. Yeah, I'm using the rear camera. Ah, okay. it, it, it's it's it, it's mounted here on my on my scope here. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I I pointed outside of my window and and I track and I'm trying to track planes and things like this. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to do and make sure that everything's working. So mm -hmm. okay, cool. <laughs> so uh, you're running on on Linux, right? On uh, on a Linux box on a PML and. Uh, what, what drive are you using? Are you working already with uh, with Christians? Myself, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm working on, on the Orange Pi 5 and, and with Ubuntu to, to, to get the image from, from the camera and, and everything. So, but other than that, I'm not working with Christian or other. Okay. But a Christian, that's, so, that's, so the uh, next, that's the next step so that he, he has the right driver to, to talk to the camera. Yeah. 
and I'm still working on uh, the driver to do the things and uh, the re-implementation takes some more time, uh, but we are getting there. Yeah, and that, that's one of the reasons uh, when I start working with the camera of that. Uh, before I was just working with the video and the video is say eight bits. So I made all the algorithms, all the, the backgrounds of tractors and the bobs and everything based on the eight bits, Im eight bit images. So right now I, I just, uh, Switch, uh, switch on. Uh, I just implemented the 16-bit version, mm -hmm. and I was trying with it, so uh, to make sure that everything was working with eight or 16-bit. Okay. So it can work with both. Wow, cool. <laughs> yeah, that that's a really tricky uh, part uh, because normal uh, video systems, the broadcasting uh, stuff is uh, uh, based on eight bit, and uh, for 16-bit, it's it's so much more data that is stored in each image. Because you have so much shades um, of uh, the color channel to deal with, it, it gets us pretty much resolution. But uh, the data, uh, the amount of data, uh, is really, really huge. Yeah, but the, the thing is, the fact is that when I get the image from the camera, I get a mono image, as I, as I was saying before, and yeah. I, and then from the mono image, I, I apply the background subtractor. And the background of the yes. the output of the background of the is just a, 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 a gray image. It's not even gray. It's just uh, it's just a, a, a pigment image, yeah. and, and to, to, to be processed further. Yes, because it's, it's just it's just on or off. Mm -hmm. So it's just to be processed further. And and yeah. when I get the image from the camera, it's just a mono image, one channel. So the difference between the eight bit and the sixteen bit is just like twice the size of the the, the, the amount of data. Because uh, if I get even the, the 8 bit or the 16 bit, I will be getting the mono image. And then later, after the, the background subtractor and, and the, blob, the, the blob detector and everything else, then I convert it to, to, to a color image, applying the buyer pattern. Yeah, so, because uh, the, the debiring takes more time than uh, background subtraction. And this is the right way yes. to do it, as yeah, yeah, you found yeah, out yourself. True. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, the bio because, is the, and it, it takes more time. Three to channels, yeah. and uh, even if the uh, normally the the debi the debiring process includes something that brings uh, the image to the uh, original uh, um, dimensions back, and uh, normally you're doing a two by two binning and reducing the size of the image uh, uh, a lot. And uh, since this debiring process uh, um, brings it to the original image dimension, um, it's um, it's, it's not just splitting it into three channels. It's uh, it's resizing and uh, do it uh, with an intelligent way of uh, using the uh, lens or uh, low halo. Uh, uh, algorithm and this one takes time because yeah that's, we're that's dealing true. with 20 yeah. megapixels yes and and i also if i if I, I did it before i would have to deal with three channels to to do the background subtractor yes. and everything else and the, the amount of data will be huge and then everything else will be huge so it makes sense so. to just apply the the buyer the buyer pattern in the, at the end when we need yeah. to, to write not like to write the the the, the video image or, or to send it to, to the process in in in, yeah. in ross and uh, we do not have any loss of uh, information uh, if no. we uh, do the background subtraction. Uh, let's say uh, the first thing uh, we get the image out of the camera. And yeah, true. Yeah. 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 We can even okay. pass the, the, the mono image, the, the, the mono uh, bear image on all the ROS and just process it when we need it. Yeah, because yes. or then we can do it's everything showing on the mono it's channel. Good, uh, yeah, it's good to to uh, pass the debiring part uh, to to where we only uh, show things for uh, all calculations for all the detections. We do not really need uh, color images. Perfect. Yeah, I agree. Uh, sorry, can I ask a question quickly? So we will get an image that is from the camera that we can store, so that if we if because if if we did. If this, the source image is not going to be a background subtracted image, is it? It's, or do we, are we going to get both? Because obviously we're going to have to save an image so that if a detection is made, we can, and if we find something interesting, we want to then be able to replay the video and get the actual image that is from the camera versus 
the um, background yes. subtracted since, one. Is that? Or? Yes. Uh, since ROS2 is uh, just providing views, and we store the original data, of course, uh, the the tracker can get whatever uh, uh, it prefers. But uh, if, if it's preferring, let's say, a color image with, uh, let's say, uh, 8 or 12 or 14 bit, then it can get uh, that because uh, ROS2 is providing that. But the original okay. raw image stream is as raw as possible. But we do have to provide some kind of uh, image reduction, uh, which uh, the camera is taking care of. So you need a bias subtraction, uh, a dark subtraction, and, an, and a flat field correction. And this is done by the camera. So you, you already get the corrected uh, image sequence as, uh, as raw as it uh, can get. Yeah, so can so a yes, no answer. We will have an image that we can store that we, if, if we detect a UFO and UAP, we will be able to visually see that versus just a black and white sort of image. Yes. yes. Okay, thanks. Because the raw data will be stored and you can always um, retrieve it in, in whatever format you want to see. And you can do the reduction by yourself if you think that's necessary. So we have both because ROS2 is providing both. It records, in, in, in case of an uh, event, it records uh, the, uh, the rawest data possible and gets you uh, uh, the, reducted, uh, the, the reduction uh, of uh, the images uh, for um, direct use in the tracker or everything else. And even so, viewing it. Because it's, so viewing it on, on a screen is, is just another view on the, on the data. Yeah, so I guess there's going to be a privacy question here. Is the data that we want to store and capture, is that going to be the data after a mask has been applied versus the data pre, you know, because if we store data prior to the mask being applied, then isn't that a privacy concern? Yes. Yes, it is. And yes, basically, we should okay. apply privacy mask before we store the data just because it is data that you, that could infringe privacy. Yeah, okay. And we do not want to... But, but uh, to just a second, but that, uh, I, will include, I will include that as part of the firmware. The firmware has to accept uh, uh, what's to remove. Yeah. So, so yeah. In, okay, so the raw data, what's coming, it's actually everything else, but not the masking, yeah. the privacy masking. Uh, the mask is included uh, into the flat fielding. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was the purpose of, of getting a flat, a correct flat fielding uh, into the yeah. camera. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But in this case, you, you have to, to get the mask via the user interface uh, stored locally somewhere. You have to get that mask into the firmware, upload it into. Yes, uh, and that's why we uh, had to focus on FX lot uh, because uh, FX lot uh, um, supplies that to the camera, yeah. and so we need uh, the possibility of uh, uploading firmware uh, at runtime. Mm. If if we would not need that, then we wouldn't have uh, done all uh, the things uh, uh, of the last week to to get FX load compiling and running on NixOS and and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It would be not necessary to do that, but since we were aware of that, that we have to do the masking uh, uh, as early as possible. Uh, yeah, we decided uh, that we have to go for um, for that uh, as early as possible. Yeah, so guys, um, anything else you want to raise? Otherwise, I'd say it's two hours and time for time for Sunday evening, at least here. Lionel, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I don't know if you saw the video uh, with uh, Chris Leto. I hope I uh, gave credit to um, <laughs> yeah. it is you, probably not. I made uh, tons of mistakes. <laughs> But no uh, that. it was a great it interview. It was uh, fun to see everybody informed. <laughs>
But uh, if you if you go read the comments, the comments uh, give you uh, lots of uh, motivations. The comments on the YouTube video, they are very uh, interested. I, I think it could uh, give us uh, traction and maybe uh, attract uh, developers or whatnot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking about that, I, I'm I'm replying to most of the comments there. Oh, you yeah. are. And, and and directing people to our to our, to our website. Hey, cool. Oh, yeah. Because most of the people did, didn't uh, get get out the, everything there, mm -hmm. or they are just curious. Oh, I, I, oh, uh, when it's out, I want to be part of. Then I'm just directing everyone to our website mm -hmm. and to our developers. And so I'm trying to to get a lot of people to 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 pay attention to us. So <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm replying to most of the comments there. And uh, the, when we were uh, when I we were talking, uh, I wanted to show some stuff on the Discord, but Discord was down at that moment. Hmm? Really? You can see it on the you can see it on one of the frame of the video. Yeah. The Discord just wouldn't boot. Uh, had was down for like two hours for me uh, that day. So uh, there was uh, lots of uh, other materials I wanted to show, but wasn't able to. I didn't. I didn't know that. Did you? Did anyone yeah. realize that? Hmm. Yeah. No, Any, anyway, like... Lionel, it was very fun to see to watch uh, how fun you guys had together, mm -hmm. and I think that's the most yeah. inspiring part here. So, forget about the mistakes. Um, nobody, yeah. cares, nobody cares yeah, about that anyway. So, oh, nobody I... remembers that. <laughs> I think it's, really? it's totally fun if you do such things. If if, if others have such situations, and, and why not make a movie out of it, and a clip, and, and yeah, post it. Yeah, and uh, especially uh, with the news now. Uh, with which news? What do you what do you mean now? Well, all those balloons news. <laughs> that's crazy not, stuff. Not, not 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 only the balloons, but you have like two <laughs> two. Two objects shot down by the Alaskan uh, Canadian border. They, there, there's just I just read another one here that another object was shot down. That's uh, great. Yeah, we, we had one this week, and now we have another one today. Yeah, those are maybe a UFO. Those are Tommy's cameras on, on a balloon uh, taking pictures for the uh, Super Bowl. <laughs> Hey guys, I stop recording before you go too deep into this. <laughs> Bye. <coughs>